So, good morning class. I think how many students have joined me? Two, three. Okay. You think I can record this session for the later? And oh, five. Great. So, you can watch it later then. So, I will not make it big. I will just go for small topics today. So, I'm going to discuss about blotting techniques here. That is... The techniques that is used to differentiate between your DNA, RNA and protein. So there are around seven techniques, Southern, Northern, Western, Southern, Western, Northern, Western, Dot, Su. So in the Southern, we mainly treat to get to know about the DNA fragments. 
that have been size fractioned by ten electro forces and this technique was invented in 1975 by E.M. Southern. So basically we have this property of radio label probe with single stranded DNA. We want to detect the presence of specific sequence in our mixed DNA sample. Then we will accordingly design the probe which will complement the sequence to our target sequence. So in this procedure first we have a DNA sample then we digest them with restriction endonucleus then run over the gel electrophoresis. And that your double stranded helix of each DNA fragment is then denatured into single standards by making pH of your gel basic and the gel is brought it over the nitrocellulose membrane. Then a probe consisting of purified single stranded DNA corresponding to a specific gene is poured over the sheet and any fragment that has nucleotide sequence complement to that probe sequence will be hybridized with the probe. If the probe has been labeled with 32p it will be redirected to the sheet will show a band of radioactivity where the probe is hybridized with the complementary fragments. So here in this diagram we can see we are having our gel electro, uh, electrophoretic gel uh, who has various test nucleic acids and we transfer in the second step over the nitrocellulose membrane. After the transfer in the nitrocellulose membrane we added our radioactive labeled nucleic acids and then we can see the hybridized nucleic acids in that. So it has various advantages that could be helped for identify DNA sequence to number of copies particular DNA uh, to identify gene mutations, deletions, duplications, gene arrangements and monoclonal leukemia, population, sequence cell mutations. So all these are possible with it. So let's check the southern blotting plot here. So this is how the southern blotting is done. It will be having no voice. Just, uh, just read through the bottom. Thank you. 
so that was basically all the major steps that are done in order to do the southern plotting now northern plotting is the same it's just we have to take precautions in order to do avoid degradation of our ribonucleus which is found on our skin and glass wares so we are gloves uh, especially treating plastics glass wares to avoid accidental introducing ribonucleus to exception so addition of diethyl pyrocarbonate inhibits ribonucleus activity and also baking at high temperatures which destroys ribonucleus activity and they are only useful treating heat resistance equipment like glass wares. So in this we have in our sample, RNA sample, then we separate according to the size on the acrose gel, then gel is then potted on nylon membrane, then hybridized with the label probe, then we remove the unborn probe and then check with the help of extra film. It's the same, everything is same, it's just, um, let's check how it is done, it's just there is a change in the buffers and yeah. So let's see how northern botting is done.
that's it um, then the western blotting that is done for the case of your proteins uh, this was actually uh, the main principle is that where the protein sample is electrophorized on the SDS page and electro transferred into the nitrocellulous membrane uh, the protein is detected and using specific primary antibodies and secondary antibodies and then with the substrates in order to identify them so in this procedure uh, technically, first of all, the samples of proteins is separated on the basis of their molecular mass using SDS page or two-dimensional electrophoresis. The electrophoresis moves the proteins from the gel onto the nitrocellulose where proteins adhere. And to detect a specific protein, an antibody to that protein must be available. And the nitrocellulose membrane itself has uh, many non-specific sites that can bind including antibodies which must be blocked with the non-specific protein solutions. The primary antibody is added in the milk solution and binds to the protein of the interest. An antibody complex is detected using secondary antibody that has a label attached to it. So here we can see our gel is run and it's being transferred over the nitrocellulose membrane. We are adding first the primary antibody, then the secondary antibody. Then afterwards, a visible, it's quite visible uh, with the yeah, X force for detecting these antibodies at the end. So it is quite helpful to identify HIVs, various diseases. So let's check how it is done in a nutshell. In this video, you will learn how to perform a Western blot. A Western blot can be used to identify specific proteins in a sample and provide information about the protein size and relative abundance in the sample. First, fill a tray with blotting buffer. You will be using this buffer to equilibrate your gel prior to starting the western blot. Next, remove the gel from the gel cassette using the opening key. Line up the arrows on the opening lever with the four arrows on the cassette to open the cassette. After trimming the top and bottom of the gel with a straight edge, equilibrate the gel in the tray with blotting buffer for 15 minutes on a rocking platform. Pre-soak fiber pads in blotting buffer so that they are thoroughly soaked. To make a blotting sandwich, obtain a container large enough to fit the gel holder and add enough blotting buffer until the container is filled approximately one centimeter deep. Place the gel holder cassette in the container with the black side down and immersed in the buffer and the white side up and out of the buffer. Lay one fiber pad flat on the black plastic. Next, wet a piece of blotting paper and place it on top of the pad. Be careful to avoid any bubbles between the pad and the paper and make certain the buffer covers the paper. Take the gel and carefully place it squarely onto the blotting paper. Again, being careful to avoid any bubbles between the gel and the blotting paper. Next, you will be applying a piece of nitrocellulose membrane. Remove the protective sheet from the membrane and wet the membrane with blotting buffer. Carefully place the membrane squarely on the gel. Avoid moving the membrane once placed on the gel as proteins will begin to blot immediately. Using a roller, remove any air bubbles between the gel and the membrane. Place a second sheet of wet blotting paper on top of the nitrocellulose membrane.
Place a second wet fiber pad on top of the blotting paper. Fold the clear plastic side of the gel holder over the sandwich and clamp it to the black plastic side by sliding over the white clip. This tight fit will squeeze the sandwich together. Insert the gel holder into the inner module. Make certain that the black side of the gel holder is next to the black side of the module. Place the inner module into the electrophoresis chamber. Add a frozen cooling unit and fill the chamber with blotting buffer to the level of the white clip on the gel holder. Place the lid on the electrophoresis chamber. Connect the electrical leads to the power supply, making sure the connections are correct, red to red and black to black. Turn on the power supply and run the blot at 20 volts. If a timer is available, set it for two and a half hours. When the run is complete, turn off the power supply and disassemble the electrophoresis chamber and remove the inner module. Open the module and place it in a container filled with blotting buffer with the black side down. Starting with the first fiber pad, remove each layer until you reach the nitrocellulose membrane. As you remove the membrane, note that the proteins have been transferred from the gel to the membrane. Note that the kaleidoscope pre-stained standards have been transferred and can be seen on both sides of the membrane. You can also see that there are no longer any proteins on the gel. Immerse the membrane in 25 milliliters of blocking solution and incubate it for 15 minutes at room temperature on a rocking platform. Pour off the blocking solution. Add 10 milliliters of primary antibody. Incubate for 10 to 20 minutes on a rocking platform. The platform should be set at a faster setting to ensure constant coverage of the membrane. Pour off the primary antibody. Rinse the membrane quickly in 50 milliliters of wash buffer and then discard the wash buffer. Add another 50 milliliters of wash buffer to the membrane and let it wash for three minutes on the rocking platform at a medium speed setting. Discard the wash buffer. Add 10 milliliters of secondary antibody and incubate the membrane for 5 to 15 minutes on the rocking platform at a fast speed. Pour off the secondary antibody. Rinse the membrane quickly in 50 milliliters of wash buffer and discard the wash buffer.
Add an additional 50 milliliters of wash buffer and wash the membrane for three minutes on the rocking platform on a medium speed setting. Discard the wash buffer. Add 10 milliliters of substrate. Incubate the membrane with the substrate for 10 to 30 minutes with either manual shaking or on a rocking platform. Watch for the color development. Once the colors have developed, rinse the membrane twice with distilled water and blot dry with the paper towel. Air dry for 3 to 60 minutes and then cover in plastic wrap for storage. Now the Southern Western, that's a mixture of your DNA and protein, uh, which find out the how DNA is binding to protein. In that way, we can identify the interaction between them specifically. And in the Northern Western, it's the interaction between your RNA and uh, your protein. So we can find in that in this thing. Dot blotting, where is a modified version of Western blotting? In this, uh, we can identify our protein of interest with the dot the blot methodology. Uh, it's a different, it's a quite additional from the western blot technique uh, which is separating proteins. So samples instead of separation they are being spotted onto the membrane and hybridized with the intake body probe. The last one is the zoo blotting technique in which the zoo blotting, zoo is, uh, is based on the southern blotting. I, every genome has two regions, your coding and non-coding. In the coding region uh, we having the interest, in the non-coding not. But the problem is that the region of DNAs are also known coding and the question is how to identify coding regions in large amount of known coding regions. So zoo blotting is precisely used to distinguish coding DNA from known coding regions during the evolution. The base sequence of known coding DNA mutates and changes rapidly, whereas the coding sequence change much more slowly and can still be recognized after millions of years of divergence between two species. Therefore, DNA is extracted from a series of related animals such as human, monkey, house, hamster and samples in this DNA who are out, cut off with suitable structural enzymes and fragments are run on gel transfer to a nylon membrane and they are probed using the DNA suspected over it. So here we can see on um, the left hand side the probes which are non-coding and the right the probes which are coding and it has all species that are related to the same sequence rat, cow, dog, human. So in this technique the probe is segment of the human DNA that may or may not be coding region and blotting is carried out as usual. So on the left, only the hybrid scene has been between the probe and human DNA. Therefore, related sequence were not found on other species. And the probe is probably known coding DNA. In the example on the right, the probe binds to the related sequence in other animals. Therefore, this piece of DNA is probably from the coding region. So that's how we differentiate. So thank you. That was about uh, southern blotting in details. I think we can we can uh, done for today here. And the rest we do in the evening then. The electro forces part. Yeah. Okay then. Bye bye. I have shared the slides with you they will soon reach to you okay all good thank you bye bye mm -hmm.